Okay, so you want to install your own radon mitigation system. We're gonna go over the necessary steps to get you to that final safe level of radon in your house if you're having issues. Um, one thing that I wanna hit on is I recommend getting a professional to come out and do it for you. Uh, there's a lot of steps that aren't very safe. This is an instructional video on how to do a DIY, do-it-yourself radon mitigation system installation. Okay, so if you're ready to install your own radon mitigation system with the safety precautions in place and the education that you have in your brain, let's get started. Now that we have the hole dug out and a, a hole cut into the pipe, and you know, that's the amount of rocks we were able to take out. We're now going to seal and connect all the pipes. And we actually bought some pipe metal straps to support the pipe and hold it up against this wall. We're gonna, gonna take this guy and do something like this. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're gluing the pipes together and we already glued uh, this section of pipe and I'm just gonna run through real quick how to do it. Um, what we glued the top first because this beam here or this runner, whatever it's called, is in the way. And so we have to start at the top and then work our way down. And now we're getting to the last bit of piping connection inside. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this 45, I'm gonna put it on this long piece and then put this long piece into the hole and then connect it onto the uh, already assembled pieces that we have here. And so the products that we're using, we're using a primer right here. And then we're putting on the cement right here. And what we're doing first is we are, wherever it is, that's right here. We are sanding any burrs that are caused from cutting. And it's a bit, burrs are like uh, little pieces of plastic that are remaining stuck on the edges. You don't want any on the inside, you don't want any on the outside. So we're gonna paint it down, which we already did. And then we're gonna apply the primer first on the, on the outside here, and then on the inside of here, and then the cement second, second layer, second layer, and then stick them together and hold for about 15 seconds. Down the side, we'll down that way. Okay. We're gonna do that side, do that side, and then put it together. Ready to do it? No, that's I just cleaned up the, the rocks that we dug out of this guy. I put it in a bucket. I'm just going to take it outside and toss it in the woods. Um, there's woods behind our house, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, so what we did as it exits the house, we put a, uh, a brace around here. So it's not going to pull away from the wall at all. This is me yanking it pretty hard, and it's stuck on there. So I feel pretty confident that it's, it's not going anywhere. You know, it might shake a little this way, but we're gonna try and fix that as we go. So I put in another brace going across here. I drilled concrete screws into the sides and it's pretty good up top here. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna focus on the piping, installing the fan, going up the side of the building here. Um, this is how we left it for about maybe three or four days. We just capped it and uh, we're gonna use this. This will be a piece that we use here. But we're just gonna assemble this and then install the fan. The electrical will come later. It'll probably come out the side right here and we'll get to electrical another day. So what we did is we dry fitted the PVC and you see we have a Y piece here. So when the water comes down the pipe, 
because there's going to be condensation and then also rainwater, it's going to go into this. We're going to drill a hole here and then connect these two pieces of PVC and bypass the fan. So all the water uh, doesn't go into the fan. Some people will do uh, the fan in line with the downspout and the water will go into the fan. And this is just to prolong the life of the fan. You can get, I've heard, one to three more years out of a fan if you have a bypass. And so that's what we're doing. We're gonna connect these two pieces with a smaller tube. Um, and then we're gonna insulate that tube as well. Um, so we dry fitted it. We're gonna come over here. Uh, we're gonna cut the piece off right here because it's too long. And then we're gonna put a sweep, a 90 degree sweep um, adapter and then connect it to this fan. For these pieces right here, we've been using about uh, five inches sections of PVC. And that's what we've been doing along this piece and we're gonna do it at the bottom right here too. These couplings are used to um, easily remove the fan if there's a problem with it, um, if it's broken you need to replace it. So uh, that's why these are important, these types. You don't wanna seal it into one piece because then you gotta cut it all apart and it's a pain in the butt later. So that's what these are used for. Um, we're gonna make sure that this piece here is sloping into the house so the water slopes this way and doesn't pile up here. It won't regardless. Um, it's not like we have a, um, uh, I forget what that, that's called in plumbing, um, where it goes down and then back up. Um, it's not gonna, that's not gonna happen. There's not gonna be piling water, in my opinion. So you won't hear gurgling. If you hear gurgling, that's water built up and the fan's struggling to suck the air through. Um, so if you have that issue later on, that's what's going on. And you just need to figure out a way to divert the water flow. Um, but that's what we have going right uh, so far. We're going to seal all this up, cut the piece, put it all together, and then run the tubing up the side. How did you like perfectly line it up? That's impressive. I'm nice. You are nice. Okay, so you just wanna make sure we couldn't place it directly on this pipe, but you just wanna make sure it's sloping towards the house. So the bubble is on this side, that's good. So in retrospect, what I wish I did, I wish I moved this hole over a little bit to in line with the studs going up the side. Usually they run every like, every so often. I, I don't know what the dimensions are. I could always check the attic um, up top here is where the attic is. I could always look at the attic, see where the studs are, and then work my way down. Um, so I could drill directly into the studs with the supports, the clamps that I have for this post here, the tube that runs all the way up. But what I'm gonna do, since I don't think I'm in line with the stud, I'm gonna put an extra stud in the attic, most likely, to screw into. I'm gonna screw into this second floor um, runner that goes this way here. And then I'm gonna do one in between and one down here as well. Um, the siding of my house uh, isn't made out of sheathing. It basically goes aluminum siding, insulation, membrane, and then um, I, I think an insulation board. And so uh, it's not very sturdy to drill into or to secure things to as opposed to wood. Um, so in retrospect, I wish I lined it up with a stud so I can put, drill the clamps into it. Okay, so what we did is we took a chalk line and then kind of used it as a plumb bob to make sure that this pipe is gonna be straight up and down and then we snapped the chalk line and now we're gonna go up and we're gonna drill uh, the clamps into the side. And I'm gonna go for one at the attic, one at the second floor, and then one in between each. So I fully assembled the top part. You have your screen here that stops debris and animals, a critter screen from going down the pipe. So I assembled it down here and then I'm gonna just walk up the ladder and then put it in the uh, top of the tube, connect the two tubes and uh, secure that last bracket at the top and then the, the chutes should be good. One thing to note is I didn't secure this critter guard onto the actual piping, so if I ever have to get inside this guy from the top, for some reason, I can just take this, take this off, but I shouldn't have to do that. I shouldn't have to go on the roof and go inside, so. 
So we ran the pipe all the way up, and the pipe is up against the house now. You can see that it juts out a little bit at the top where the shingling is. So we put 245s on there to get it away from the house, and then we ran it down, and we used four clamps, and there's a little bit of movement. I'm shaking it now, but it's pretty good, pretty solid. And then once it's connected to the fan down here, it'll be even more solid. So I'm gonna reassemble this here because the fan was a little crooked and I didn't like that. So I wanted to make it more so the fan is, is level. And that's that. What I did here between the left and the right pictures, the two different setups, the left was how I originally had the setup when it was first installed. I sealed everything and then ran the pipe. After I ran the pipe, I realized that the fan was crooked. It wasn't lining up properly in terms of it being uh, horizontal. You want the fan to be level. And so the left side was a little crooked. It was off. And then it was also pulling away from the siding. So that Y piece that connects the vertical pipe to the fan bypass, that Y was actually too short. So I had to extend that connection from the fan to the siding because the pipe was being pulled away from the house. So in retrospect, what I wish I did, uh, I wish I just dry fit everything on the outside, ran the vertical pipe, and then sealed everything. Uh, because what I had to do is I had to run back out to Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever I got the fittings and the PVC pipe from, and then I had to reassemble everything. So it was an added cost, and I wish I didn't seal the outside. So you can see that the fan also has above and below where the inlet and outlets are a larger or a, a greater length of vertical piping where the coupling meets the PVC. So you can slide the PVC couplings up and down to remove the fan from the setup if you need to replace the fan. So the left side didn't have as much space to move those couplings and it was more difficult to get that fan out. The right side has more space to move the couplings to remove that fan. So that's the difference between the two setups here. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is put a lot of silicone all around here, all around the bottom. Same for this guy. I'm going to surround silicone, set surround with silicone, and just Put a lot of silicone and then slide this back into place. You can see how I just globbed a whole bunch of silicone on there. I'm just going to push this guy right back. So I just drilled this hole right there, and I'm going to put the threaded end in here, and then the tube, the drain bypass, will be on the barbed end. And I already have the one fixed up right in the bottom of here. So I'm finding that hand tightening these guys, instead of using the ratchet, is a lot easier to get them to stay straight up and down as opposed to using this and then it tilts off sideways or anything. So hand tightening it slowly is the best way. So this is what it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna caulk around here and then when it rains, all the water will go through this hole, through this tube and then bypass the fan. So this is what it looks like. And it's pretty sturdy. I'm shaking it right now. Feels pretty good. Now I'm going to put this insulation around this guy. And so when the rain comes down through this guy, or the condensation that forms inside the tube, as it drips down through the bypass, 
this will stop it from freezing or hopefully stop it from freezing when it gets too cold out because this is really thin and so it's more likely to to freeze and then as it comes down it'll freeze over on the right side and then it'll just come down through the fan so hopefully this will stop it from freezing